Good evening, my neighbors. Welcome to the 48th episode of The Step Back. Your host, Leon Tonkins, my main man, Jacob Moses. And uh, we're here to you late, late in the Friday night. No NBA games. It's the All-Star Game weekend. Well, mm -hmm. Sunday. But, you know, last time we saw you guys, it was our interview with Kenny Anderson. Um, that was great. You know, the support, we appreciated all the support. And, you know, it was a blast to ha have a celebrity guest on. But, That's you know, uh, covering week nine, week 10 of the NBA and uh, preview the All-Star Weekend. You know, how was your week, bro? It was, it was good. It was a productive week. Um, stuff that we couldn't get on, but it, it's going to be hard to top, you know, having Kenny on. So, you know. We deserve a break in my Ross voice because I know you love that show so much. <laughs> no, but um, no, nah, it was good, productive, staying healthy in the house, trying to work. That's pretty much it. And watching the Knicks do some work. That's so I'm happy. Word. Knicks doing work. Nets doing work. I mean, New York is back on the map on, in basketball scene, you know. I'm talking about. And this is episode 48. Nazi Muhammad. Oh, I was going to call it the Grom edition, give it a crossover with spring training oh, thank baseball. You. But oh, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. We'll that, keep the, the best pitcher in New York. Gun smoke. <laughs> 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 you, know, you, you mentioned the Knicks doing well, mentioned the Nets doing well. And since we had Kenny Anderson on, uh, in our, on our show, James Harden has passed him coincidentally on a Nets triple doubles list with seven. I, I didn't even know Kenny had five. To, matter of fact, I didn't know Sean Bradley had five. That, that, that's what threw me off. Oh, Sean Bradley. I, who who would have known Sean Bradley's skilled, swishing, dishing, passing, crashing? I don't, I don't know. No, nah, hell no. You, you can find him on a poster and usually on the other end. <laughs> that, that's true. Very much true. But uh, Brooklyn, one of the hottest teams in the league, won 10 of their last 11 going into the break. Uh, Kyrie and Harden just doing work. You know, Bruce Brown and um, my man Nicholas Claxton uh, coming in, really providing a spark off the bench. And, and, you know, people say that he's the second most skilled player on the team behind KD, which is saying a lot, considering who else is on the team. Uh, KD has been out, uh, calf strain, um, going to miss the All-Star game. A at this point, you can, uh, you know, afford to take the time off with him because, you know, with them in second place, right behind Philly for the top seed. So um, I'm, I'm excited with what's going on in Brooklyn and Hardy's looking like an MVP candidate himself. Absolutely, man. They, that team is playing amazing. You know, when the Knicks don't come on, I'll flip over to yes and watch them. And class, I told you, if you give that, if once he came back, he was going to be a problem. Because you could just see it. He brings energy on the floor. Uh, he's a skill, more skilled version of Mitchell Robinson. <laughs> He'll block, I'm, hey, he blocks shots. You know, from what I've seen, like tapes of him, I think his nice little mid range could come along definitely better than Jordan. And I think you'll get more. You know, you can play him 25, basically do what the Knicks do. You know, play 25 for – what the hell is his name? DeAndre Jordan. <laughs> DeAndre Jordan, you play 25 for Nicholas Claxton. So there's your size right there. You know, you were worrying about size, but that's nice to have right there when you can have two big guy, two guys with size and you won't have that drop-off. Um, but Kyrie's been doing work. We all know what Kyrie was about. Um, just – certified scorer, bucket getter, whatever you want to call him. He could break you down off the dribble. He can do whatever he wants on the floor. I mean, Joe Harris, of course, Gunner, you know, Jay, whoever you want to call him, Jay Smooth. <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, the guy, the guy's nice, though. Uh, James Harden playing like the MVP. We know he can be playmaker on the floor. His playmaking is really underrated because he can really set guys up on the floor. It's just, I think how he moves yeah, he doesn't really do it at a fast pace. 
mm-hmm. kind of like a Luca kind of game. Like you don't see it until you know he slows the game down. He his court vision is great. That's another thing people don't really see. And the Nets are just doing work, man. Like I said, top three team in the the East. If they are, I think they are, even without KD, which is crazy, but it's. They might as well carry themselves to a final, especially with KD getting his little maintenance thing on. Well, let him do it. And I can see the Nets in the finals. Yeah, like, and, and this was like part of the reasoning why I, I guess, wanted Harden here mm-hmm. because you, you figured Kyrie and KD wouldn't be able to hold up for the entire season. And you know how durable Harden is. So mm-hmm. I think at some point they're going to have to scale back um, Harden's minutes once, you know, KD and they get some more reinforcements considering the buyout season and, and uh, that comes along. But, you know, you mentioned the other guys like Claxton and, you know, Landry Shamit's played well. Bruce Brown is like that quasi center. He's playing like that PJ Tucker role. You know, mm, I like him. He, he cut to the basket. He's now knocking down corner three. So he, he's kind of what PJ Tucker has been, but yep. only not, you know, PJ Tucker is not, is, he's not a, just a corner shooter. <laughs> Um, but I, you know, I, I'm really excited what's going on in Brooklyn. Nash winning coach of the month, um, Harden winning player of the month. So the, the adjustments they made from opening night to this point here um, really show signs of growth. And now with buyout season coming along, talks of Blake Griffin might be coming on board. You know, I'm for Blake Griffin here. As long as he's not starting, you can give him 20. <laughs> 25 minutes, mm-hmm. you know, give you that stretch five. Maybe he might surprise you with a dunk. Uh, but you, you put Blake Griffin coming off that bench, I can finally see the last of Andre Robeson because that jump shot, that hitch is just hideous. It's oh, my all, it is God. awful to watch. I could have told you about I could, I could tell you about his freaking jumper all day. And the thing about it, he was supposed to be a decent three-point shooter. I don't know what the hell that is, but you know, the defense, that's what you're going to get from them. But anything else at this point? Mm-mm. Mm-mm. And, and, and Shumper definitely looks like he hasn't played in three years. So, did they cut him? No, they, they, they cut him and then they signed him to a, like another 10 day contract. Oh, okay. Because uh, I guess they want the flexibility, but he mm-hmm. looks like he just hasn't played. <laughs> That's what happens, man. He keeps himself in good shape, but it's he just, does. Well, you, if you can't keep yourself in like consistent form, or say, you know, on the floor, you're not going to be any good. I mean, it's just going to be a body. And I don't think he's going to get. It's another one. I don't think he's not old, but I don't think he's going to give you much. You know, he's not going to have that same energy. Maybe he'll give you a few defensive plays here and there, but don't expect much. Yeah, and and Ness has been tied to a lot of the, like the uh. A lot of the big men in the, in the buyout mm-hmm. uh, talk with, you know, Drummond and Cousins and now Blake Griffin. Mm-hmm. I mean, if I would have to choose one guy out uh, of the pack, I would probably say Blake Griffin. Because oh. I know I can have him come off the bench. Mm-hmm. And, you know, James Harden is, and Irving are masters of the pick and roll. Mm-hmm. So, you know, you, you get Blake in a pick and roll situation, you might get a lot from him, you know. Maybe. Uh, he uh, is a decent spot-up shooter, mm-hmm. but I, I think with more weapons around him, he might be able to be more productive. Because, you know, Blake looks pretty much done this season. Mm-hmm. But if you remember that uh, playoff series against Milwaukee where he pretty much, they knew they were going to get swept, but he went out there on one leg and just, you know, tried to will him to a victory and it, it mm-hmm. didn't happen. But, uh, you know, Drummond, uh, I, I like him, but I, I don't think uh, he, I, I don't think he'll space the floor well enough with his team. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. And, I think he's more clogged the middle. Yeah, and, and Cousins, he's going to start a fight with Harden as soon as he walks in the door. So <laughs> that ain't, ain't, ain't going to work. <laughs> nah, yeah, uh, always like Blake. Always been a big fan of his. And I think that he would be perfect for his team because he's not, you know, doing a lot. 15 to 20 minutes is perfect. Keep his keep his legs fresh. You know, maybe anchor that second unit with 
you know, TLC and Claxton and guys like that. And it would be, see, that's the thing. It would have been nice to have Spencer back because mm-hmm. then y'all second unit would have been just off the chain. But yeah, having a guy like Blake Griffin, you know, he'll get you 12, 13 points a game easily. So why not? And the other guys, like you said, Drummond just clogs the middle. It doesn't really fit your offense, and Cousins just no. You just go to LA, something. Yeah, yeah. Cousins, I mean, Cousins just screams Lakers. I'm surprised it hasn't been done already, but mm-hmm. um, maybe maybe there's more to that than meets the eye. But you know, mm-hmm. we'll, we'll we'll see what happens there. Mm-hmm. Cuteness, cuteness overload. Thank you. She don't listen though. <laughs> <laughs> so she, she had to walk in but yeah definitely I, I like what I'm seeing from the Nets and I like what I'm seeing from my Knicks man this, this has been it's one of those seasons New York is always better when all the New York teams play well plus they got the fans back in so there we go so that's... yeah yeah you, you know you mentioned the Knicks um they had a huge win Last week and over in the garden when they finally let the fans in and then you see the Bleacher Report and finally over 500. Um, you know, you know talk, you talk about the Knicks, man. Championship bound, man. We out there. Finals. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but it's been awesome to, awesome to see my man Julius Randle. I told you, you stop the Beyblade. You go places. Like, you just stop the spinning trying to do all it no he slowed his game down he's not trying to do too much and I've always said if he got the right coaching he can be an all-star the sky was the limit for him and it's awesome to see like I give credit to Tibbs but I give more credit to Kenny Payne because he knew him from Kentucky he knew how he ticked he knew what kind of player he could be and we're seeing that right now you know he's averaging 49 from the field 40 from three averaging 23 11 and five for the season. I mean, that's, that's star numbers, man. That, that's, for, especially for us. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> let's be honest. It, it's great. It's great to see him being a leader on the floor. He, he just does everything. They respect him. Even the young guys like Obi Toppin, Emmanuel Quickly, you know, Frank Nilkina, they have just the high regards for, this, for Julius. And, you know, a lot of people ask me, hey, would you extend them? Absolutely. You know, I called him Zebo Light for a reason. He's the kind of guy that you have in the middle of everything of that grit and grind team that is just the glue. You know, you go to him on the floor. He does everything. And I know Obi is there, but I would definitely extend Julius Randle because you got to start a core, and it's going to start with Julius. I, You know, I said Mitch and RJ, but it starts with Julius, the way he's playing. Then you got RJ, my guy, he is stepping it up shooting at 35% from three up from last year. His field goal percentage is up as well. I believe his field, his free throw percentage is up, can be better. I want to see 75 to 80% usually for guards. You know, he can become another good playmaker on the floor. Maybe will he be Julius's Robin? Who knows? I think we still need another person. Um, Noel has been great. The one thing I'm starting to worry about are these minutes from these guys. Mm-hmm. But not having Mitch, so it's going to be interesting to see for the second half. But Noel has been doing great, blocking shots, running the floor. Derek Rose, uh, pretty much you know what you're going to get from him. 16 points a game, that's fine. Not giving him all those damn minutes, trying to run him into the ground. Alfred Payton, he's starting to, he started to show up. Still think he's trash. Um, <laughs> he start, he's, he's showing up. You know, Frank Nilakina. that game last night. He's he did what I've been just screaming for him to do. Frank, you get an open shot, take it. Don't just no hesitation. Step it up, take it. He had three threes. I thought they would get him more involved in the offense, but didn't. It's fine. He's he plays stellar defense. He's a Tibbs guy. So I don't understand why he wouldn't be, you know, in his rotation more. I'm hoping to see in the second half that he gives him that shine because Frank is a glue guy that you have on the team. Somebody, a three and D guy that can come off the bench. Everybody, oh, start him, start. No, he can be a 20-minute guy. You can be effective not playing starters minutes. And that's what a lot of people don't understand about that. You just, like Emmanuel quickly. Yeah, it's, what, what I like to see him start it, yeah, but it's just certain things that he doesn't do yet. So let him come off, fire his threes, you know, give us four threes a game. You want to come off Lou Will? I'll take a Lou Will 2.0 rather than 
some bum sitting on the end of the bench, you know, yeah. that we've always had over these years. But I'm pretty happy. You know, I'm not going to celebrate like they was out in the street over 500, but I'm, I'm happy about it. Absolutely. It's, it's nice to see, you know, good basketball and them not giving up after being down after three quarter, you know, damn, this game is over. No, they show a lot of fight. This is, there was, here's the reason I wanted Tibbs. This is the reason right here. He was going to have these young guys playing hard. You know, it's funny. I just, when OB did, you know, basically OB would do something on the floor that he doesn't like, tends to throw his hands up, he'll go, OB, 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 and he'll say it like six or seven times. And it's funny because you can hear it. And he's just, he's getting on him. He wants these kids to succeed, you know. They they go as he goes. And like I said, props to the Knicks, man. It's, it's been great. Like I said, they'll get into a play a playing game. You can rewind it back. Go to our previous when we talked about it. I said a playing game, but I will take the playoffs. Oh, we're going to get swept anyway. I don't care. It's called culture change. You get into the playoffs, players see, oh, man, maybe I can I can work with this. Knicks going to the playoffs. Maybe I can join that. And people finally start to flock to New York. But there's reports saying next year our star is going to force his way to New York. Whatever. Keep building our culture. Our culture is there. It's finally it's set. New York grit is back. Just the toughness. Never give up. I don't want to say 90s Knicks because they won a lot of games, so I don't want to compare it to them. Um, but I love what I'm seeing, man. I, New York basketball is back on both sides. You, you know, you mentioned the Knicks and, and the, the talk around the league. And, you know, for a long time, they've been known as a laughing stock and, you know, poor management. But, you know, you talk to now many of the players, there's respect being gained back to the Knicks. You know, you look at Lou Will, you look at now the analysts. Uh, you know, it, it, like you say, maybe the stars will come back to to the Knicks, and, and uh, that culture change is back, and and you know, they're in the fifth spot now. Where do you, do you see them holding a playoff spot, or uh, probably for that playing game? Right now, I I and like I said, playing or seven to eight. I was, I think they dip because they got a tough schedule coming up, so I can see them holding on to that seven to eight spot. And I'm gonna stick with that. I'll say seven to eight. If they get higher than that, I'm taking that. I don't. I don't care who they're playing. Like, I had a lot of Knicks fans in another group. Oh, they're playing this. Uh, they're playing the B squad. I don't care. You you play to win the game. I don't give a damn who's out there on the floor. You take wins as you go. <laughs> what are you gonna? Teams are gonna. Do you think the teams felt sorry for us when we didn't have when we lost Mitch? We lost Rose. No, they're gonna. You're gonna step on their necks. I don't care what B squad, C squad, D squad. <laughs> A, B, C, D, E, F, G. No, kick their ass and call it a day. And that's what I'm seeing. We we got players. They got guys that want to play finally. We have a future. First round draft picks anywhere. Shout out to James. He actually, you know, shout out IQ. That's our guy. You know, Mr. Every Three. But um, swim along, Emmanuel. Swim <laughs> along. But actually, it's nice to see, man. Because like I said, 20 years of hell. Haven't missed any Nick games except for one, like I posted in the group, and it's been hell. So I am going to enjoy this and ride it into the end. Pause. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, a- a- as you should. That's you know that's what being a fan is about. You know you've been on the low end, and then they see this rise and hopefully you know um, to the other side. But I- I- I've said, it's, I've said it before. Um, I, I like the trajectory of the Knicks. They're, they're finally doing it right. It's mm-hmm. copying what Brooklyn did to yep. almost to a T. And, uh, you know, the city is buzzing when the basketball is good, and, and that's what we're getting. Yes, sir. Um, you know, it, are there, we're pretty much finished well with the first half of the season. Are there any teams that, you know, have surprised you along the way? Let's, uh, let's start off with the Jazz. You know, who the hell would have thought if <laughs> they would have been this good? I We said, what, fifth or sixth, maybe? Mm-hmm. Fifth highest? What are they? The top three, right? They're still at still the top. Yeah, okay, I thought so. So, you know, Mitchell. Daddy, can I have a new game? Jayon, I'm doing something. It's almost bedtime, okay? You want to say hi to Leon? Since you want to interrupt, say hi to Leon. Say hi to Uncle Leon. All right, hey. <laughs> but we've seen, you know, Mitchell, you know, Rudy, you know, they they feed off those guys. Uh, Inglis, 
uh, my man Jordan Clarkson, which will miss season awards. We'll get to that. Um, it's just they're doing everything. They're playing defense. They are one of your best. I think they're the best three point shooting team in the league. Mm-hmm. Um, they're, they're a tough team to beat. <laughs> they they are. They make it. They put the pressure on you now. They can get to the rack. They can shoot it. I mean, that guy. The guy has them playing. I forgot their coach's name. I have, I'm drawing Snyder. a blank. Yeah, there you go. But um, yeah, he has them playing ball, and I can. I don't know if they'll stay there, but. The way it's looking, man, they could be a top three surprise team. Another surprise team we have, Charlotte Hornets. Gordon Hayward playing the best basketball since 2016-17 season when he was an all-star. LaMelo Ball, unanimous rookie of the year. Because that dude, he has bought the excitement to Charlotte. He's brought it back. And, you know, and this this is with uh, Devontae Graham having a down year. So, and you got guys like Bridges. You got guys like Monk. You know, hit, hitting winner game winners, and you know, finally coming on like he should have, you know, years ago. And the the Martin brothers, two guys that came out of nowhere, they're very skilled players. But the Hornets, they are Terry, scary Terry. You know, as you say, scary hours. I'm talking scary <laughs> Terry right now. Um, that guy, he's he's been really good signing his contract. He's living up to it, and. The Hornets are definitely a, a team to watch. I, I like watching. I always like watching the young teams go to work. And there we go. Oh, I'm gonna get this is the good part of it. We can do the good and the bad. Mm-hmm. Good, I'm gonna go to the Spurs. Winning basketball is back in San Antonio. We've seen it for the past twenty plus years. Trust me, I've been in the way in that nineteen ninety nine. So <laughs> I've been I was I was at the start of that. But um <laughs> Yeah, they're back with guys, Keldon Johnson, Lonnie Walker IV, Devin Vassell, you know, Luke Semanic. I hope I didn't butcher his name. You know, it's another good player. You know, they whomped us, and they just – and they only have another one. I think Derek White is still hurt. You know, they got De- De- DeJounte Murray. I love that kid. He plays both sides of the floor. He can shoot. Pop is looking old, but his coaching didn't change. Um, Man, but, yeah, he's looking terrible. That long hair yeah. got to go, Pop. Cut yeah. that hair. Yeah. They got to go. <laughs> But, yeah, the Spurs, they're another fun team to watch. Oh, I can't forget my man, mid-range guy, DeMar DeRozan, has turned himself into one of the best playmakers in the league and a leader. You know, it's great to see. You know, with him leaving Toronto, you didn't know what you were going to get, but he has taken a leader role on and establishing that winning culture along with L.A., LaMarcus Aldridge, Trey Lyles. I can't forget about him. And, hey, that team, that's another good team, man. And – Unless you want to handle the bad, I can handle the bads, man. Cause I, I oh. I'm ready to smoke tonight. Well, you know, you, you mentioned the Jazz before, and uh, back when we had our duos, I, I, I will say I, I did have Mitchell and Gobert right outside the top five. I, I thought they'd be if there were one duo that can get right in there, that would be it. You know, you, you talk about the chemistry they had from last year. Mm-hmm. How Gobert shut down the league, and then they had to reconnect, and mm-hmm. they really spent the off season and that time in the bubble reconnecting so uh, it seems to have paid dividends and Mm -hmm. you know Mitchell and Gobert are are more or less could be MVP candidates but you know you you mentioned them getting uh, uh, to the rack but they won't get any foul calls or Mm -hmm. uh, being picked last for all-star games (laughs) so maybe is there a Utah slander Eh, I don't know I never picked them in in, in jam I didn't want to play with Jeff Hornacek so I didn't either I should say it was the Knicks Maybe the Knicks, Nets, can extend the Bulls, and I want to say Phoenix. I'm going to have Barkley because it's a version of NBA Jam. If you play NBA Jam enough, and I did have it, I lost it. It was a version with Charles Barkley before the whole licensing thing, and I killed it, him and Kevin Johnson. But yeah. who the hell, nobody give a damn about no Utah. Y'all poison Jordan. Nobody care about y'all. Yeah, I'll be damned if I'm picking Malone in the game, so you can, you can forget <laughs> all that. <laughs> that ain't happening. None whatsoever. I mean, the, the jerseys were nice, but you know. Oh yeah. Uh, no, nah, Hornacek Malone, that that ain't happening here. But you know, you, you, like you say, Utah's been one of the real good surprises. They ran off about seventeen out of eighteen, and and mm-hmm. really taking the league by storm. Jordan Clarkson, more or less sixth man of the year, and and uh, it's, it's just a deep team that's starting to hit their stride. Hopefully they can keep that going in the second half. 
you mentioned Charlotte. Uh, LaMelo put him in the starting lineup, and Charlotte has just been rolling. Uh-oh. Can you hear me? Okay. Okay, go ahead. So, yeah, I was going to say. Yeah, Charlotte. Yeah. LaMelo Ball. Uh, really, really helping my fancy team at that once they put him in the starting lineup. So, they've taken off a flare and, and proven LaVar Ball right. Yeah, which <laughs> which is funny in itself. Uh, the Spurs, was one of my teams I, I, I thought were going to really make the, a run. They, uh, the bubble is, fell just short, and, uh, you know, Popovich is going to coach them up real well. But um, I had another team that you and my good my man Charles laughed at me about, uh, a good buddy over Matt Bushnell, his team, uh, from the Audible, Tuesday nights. Football Life, you catch that uh, uh, podcast, Tuesday Night at 7. Chicago Bulls, Zach Levine, Kobe White, Pat Williams. Chicago Bulls and, are, are, are right there. Absolutely. I told Matt, Matt mentioned the comment, no Bulls. I ain't going to slam to the Bulls, man. I, I will give them this. This is the, I got, I got a nice little stack. This is the best month they have had in three years. With Zach Levine leading the way, one thing I've I've said about this team, they got to get better on defense. They, if they get better on defense, they will be fine. But the Bulls, they're, they're right in the thick of it. Levine's another guy that we've seen come out of his shell once he's gotten a chance to shine, and he's healthy, and he's showing with an all-star appearance. So the sky's the limits for the Bulls too, man. They're, the East, and they're coming out with these young guns, man. It's, it's fun to see. That's enough for the Bulls, though. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <sighs> You can't give them too much love, can you? Nah, nah. They ruined my for the most part. I mean, and, and Chicago's uh, troubles has usually been the offense. Now it's defense. You know, you look at the Bears, they're looking at trying to get Russell Wilson and mm-hmm. um, upgrading their know, offense. Man. Yeah, tell me about it. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> you get golf, they get Wilson. Shit. <laughs> um, but yeah, you know, yeah, Billy Donovan has done, has done some really good work over there, and uh, uh, I, I'm excited to see if they're able to hold that spot down. Mm-hmm. Charlotte, um, in need of a big man as well. Um, there's talks of them looking at Vucevic over in Orlando or maybe Drummond. Mm-hmm. If Charlotte can get that big man they need, they could really uh, scare some, some of the top teams uh, as far as their play. Because they're very fast-paced, but they're very young. But, you know, when you're young, you really don't care. Yeah, you run. But imagine that pick and roll with uh, Mello and Dr- – Love Mello and Drummond. Excuse me. Right. Well, no, you know, Mello gave him – No. Mello gave him the – he gave him the, he gave him the go. He I don't gave him, give a damn – no. Gave him the nope. green. No, no, no. Three to the dome. Is, anybody no, can do fine. it now. That's fine. He, he can do it through the dome. I'm not calling you Mello. I'm calling you Love Mello. When Mello retired, then I'll think about it. All right. Mellow's greatness. You I mean, ain't great yet. <laughs> but, no, nah, that, that was pretty cool to see him swap the jerseys. You know, that – LaMelo's probably just like, wow, man, that's one of the best players ever, you know, swapping jerseys with me. I see they actually let it go now. Did you notice they're letting the players swap yeah. the jerseys? Like, yeah. how, how are they really going to force that? You know, you got to separate everybody, all these security <laughs> guards. You know, no, no, you can't do this. You can't not. Nah. Everybody knew it was just like for a week, and then they they, mm-hmm. they relax off of it. So mm-hmm. it, it it was no big deal. For real. Yeah. And, and another team. I'm I'm starting to see some positive trends of the Dallas Mavericks. Yes. Uh, Luca is finally getting the help he needs from KP. It was the only loss Brooklyn had in this in this stretch because KP decided he wanted to go in the post. <laughs> Soft as Charmin, country crock butter. Decided he wanted to go down in the block, use seven three, and hit some turnaround jumpers. So, I'm um, I'm shocked. You know, KP heard the trade rumors and said, "Nah, that that do not 
separate me from Luca. <laughs> I don't want to go. <laughs> no, 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 give us free. No, but <laughs> but yeah, he he knows what's good for him. You know, I had to go back in that darn game with Golden State, and he instead of backing Steph Curry down, do want to shoot a seventeen foot out? Like something wrong with you, man? You, you really need to use that size. And plus, you're hopefully staying healthy. Hopefully. But yeah, they Dallas is definitely on a you know, they're on the uptrend. Tim Hardaway Jr., he's coming back around, you know, showing some consistency. You know, that's one of his biggest heels in his freaking career. It's just he can't stay consistent. He'll drop twenty for the whole week and then the next week he's dropping like ten, maybe, you know, twelve here. And yeah, you, they're gonna need whatever production they can get out of him. Jalen Brunson always liked him. Tough player. Um, Powell, another tough player. They, they just they don't have a lot. So whatever they yeah. have, they just got to basically max out what they have on the bench and on the starting rotation. And in the starting rotation, sorry. Yeah, I, I we've said this before. I, we always thought Dallas was like one player short. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we're pretty close to the trade deadline. Um, I, I still think they need a wing player. Yep. Uh, I, I think Buddy Heald will fit perfectly in Dallas. They've been talked about before last trade uh, deadline this past off season. Mm-hmm. I'm surprised Mark hasn't pulled the trigger yet, but um, and, and I'm also I'm also surprised Luke Walton hasn't been fired yet. But that's a whole <laughs> other that's a whole other story. But yeah, Buddy Heald over to Dallas or uh, 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 maybe somebody from New Orleans. They get a JJ Redick. Yeah, they do. Another shooter out there, but uh, I, I do like Dallas now possibly contending in that play in game with Golden State and, and Memphis, uh, giving them a run. Oh, for sure. All right, we got to do the last disappointing team. And I want to take this one <sighs> the Boston Celtics. <sighs> Guys horrible (laughs) too good to be horrible you know you got Jalen and Jason averaging 25 points a game two all-stars doing great and then everybody else is just Dookie McDookerson um I mean it is terrible Kemba playing come on man you can't be yeah see this is what happened when New York go to Boston see what happened see could stink all over them I just Jeff Teague, what did you bring him in for? Tristan Thompson, what are you doing? I, I mean, I mean, maybe they got what's the other guy that I like? Was it Bain? Is it Bain? One of the guys? Uh, no, not Bain. no, Bain's in Memphis. No, Bain's, uh, Bain's in Memphis. Oh, Neesman, there you go. I'm sorry. Yeah, they both can shoot, but yeah, like give him more time. My guy Pritchard. Yeah, I'm pat myself on the back. Yes, I was right about him. You know, he's a tough player. He's a Boston like player. Um. But everybody else, trash. <laughs> I'm, once again, Taco Fall, use him. I mean, just, just use him. I don't, I don't. Listen, I ain't say he's gonna be like a world beater, but put him on the floor. Y'all need something. I mean, Daniel Tice can only do so much. <laughs> I mean, he's he's a tough player. You know, he'll get you twelve and maybe six or seven with the right minutes. But Brad Stevens, his ass should be right on the hot seat with Luke Walton, the way they've been freaking playing. Well, and plus they don't have Jalen. I mean, excuse me, they don't have Marcus Smart. But still, with two guys like Jalen and Jason, what's the problem? What the problem is? Well, according to the CEO of the Celtics, it was the fact that Kyrie left, and they had like they were left in a, in a bind. So, you know, who who thought that Kyrie made the world revolve? You know, um, <laughs> I I didn't I didn't see that one coming at all, and. I, I always thought Danny Ainge kind of like, never really pulled the trigger on any move. You know, mm-hmm. you go back to the Paul George, you could have had him, you could have had, you know, Miles Turner refused to pull the trigger. And now they're in talks, uh, there's rumors of now Jeremy Grant, we're looking at Vucevic. Oh, wow. Yeah. But they're just as good as the Mets of, you know, the Wilpon era. Looking into, you know, dialogue. We always heard that dialogue talking about looking into, you know, making calls. No, we don't want to hear that. 
you got to pull the trigger, Danny. Stop, stop holding the picks up your butt and just make a deal. You get Vucevic, that, that's, that'll be a big move for you. Even a drumming, you know, you, you need somebody that's going to move with those guys. You need, those guys need help. You know, Tatum and Brown, they need help. They just, that's it. I don't know what you, what you think. And you've been, you hit on those two, but everything around that besides Pritchard, and mixed bag. He he got lucky. He got two players lucky at getting canned. But you know it's Boston. I don't really care. Hope they they can lose. We smacked them, so it makes me happy. I don't care who they didn't have. <laughs> I mean, same here. I mean, I, I won't cry any tears for Boston, but uh, you, you know, they like the Toronto Blue Jays of the all season. They they were in the, every player and ended up with George Springer and and, mm-hmm. and, and you know it's just. Mm-hmm. Hold on. They uh yeah, were you know they were in on every player, ended up getting nobody. Mm-hmm. So, you no, know, we'll, we'll see what Boston has to has to do here. Yeah, but they they got some work to do, and to make anything just somewhat decent, once again, make a move, Danny. You got picks, you got this. So, I mean, also it goes back to it goes back to everything we've always talked about. Why not make that big move when you had the chance to? They had all these picks. You could have used it to do something. And he hasn't. So, like, you mentioned Kyrie, and he brought he brought up, like, an interesting point of changing the logo. Mm-hmm. Now, everybody knows the logo is Jerry West. Um. Would you go. no more? Would you advocate changing the logo to Kobe or for someone else? Kobe, love Kobe, but I would say no. If you're gonna do it, it has to be like Kobe. Can you really call him like? Yeah, you can say he was a global icon with the Mamba and st- the Mamba and stuff. But why? And I've had and I hate to say it. <laughs> why wouldn't it be MJ before him? Because you got to think of a lot of these guys that's under his wing, under his brand, Melo, you know, the Melo, the Tatums, and all these other guys, they know about MJ. MJ was everywhere. I mean, especially us growing up. Who's the man? MJ. So, I mean, if anybody's going to get that spot, I would say I would rather see MJ than Kobe. I mean, because basically Jordan did every, like, for the NBA, it was just, a lot of people watched the NBA for him. And there was a lot of Bulls fans created because of Jordan to this day, you know, because we always hear it, you know. Like yeah. we didn't live through it. But um yeah, MJ, he I mean, what's not to be what's to be said about it? You you know what he's done for the game and if I had to pick somebody, definitely, you know, M Jeff as our good friend from the Total Basis podcast, Felipe Melicio says, M Jeff. That guy. <laughs> um, I mean, Kyrie has a personal attachment to him, so it, oh, yeah. it, it would it would make sense why he would you know say Kobe and, and mm-hmm. suggest it. Um, MJ is is a good suggestion. I was probably if I had to pick, I would say Kareem. You know, you have the sky hook mm-hmm. as a logo. Um, that would pretty cool. Argu- arguably the uh, the greatest player in the league. My goat. You know. Not really not talked about, but um, if you consider yeah. him in the same era as Jerry West, it, it, it might be a, a another issue. Or uh, you look to Bill Russell, <laughs> put him as a logo. Can I say it, Leon? <laughs> I'm going to take a line from Lethal Weapon. But, but, but you're black. <laughs> 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 I mean, at that, that time, they wasn't really making him the logo. Let's, let's be honest. <laughs> But Blick, but um, yeah, I can see that. That's Kareem's. My, I, that's honestly no slight to Jordan. I think Kareem's the greatest of all time. They basically tried to shut it down. Couldn't dunk. Couldn't basically had to change his whole game around because of the people he played with. Because he was so good. New York bias. You know, we we can't be the greatest at everything. So, oh well. <laughs> but but yeah, I, I definitely Kareem, MJ, Kobe. They they're all solid. 
you know, I think it needs to change though. Because look at the WNBA, Tarasi, you know, they knew she was the GOAT. And what happened? They made it a little logo. I mean, the women did it first. They said, listen, you think of Donna Tarazi, you think of WNBA. And it's, I think it's time for a change though. Even Jerry West said he was fine with it. So, you know, when he, somebody in his stature said, yeah, go ahead, do what you got to do. Why not? It remains to be seen if they'll do it though. Yeah. These, uh, these referees, <laughs> they, they've been, you know, a little out of pocket lately. Uh, J.J. Reddick spun the ball back to a ref. Montrez Howell screams and one. Draymond Green gets ejected. And now Donovan Mitchell has a, a beef with the refs. Are these guys just handing out technicals just, just like out of pocket now? Yeah. Yeah, this is getting really ridiculous now. You can't show any emotion on the floor. You can't slam a ball and freaking – because you're upset that you didn't make a play that deserves the tech. I understand you're going – I mean, and we'll go back to MJ. He used to scream into the, the effort are you doing, stupid, never got a tech. But, I mean, it took a lot to get techs back in the day. You really got to almost, like, tackle the damn dudes to get it. But you can look at the ref wrong. Oh, are you staring at me? Oh, tech, tech, tech. Oh, uh, yeah, that's what I'm talking about, tech. Like you said, oh, it won. Um, we do that all the time when we play. When you get so hyped up in the game, you get an N1, you go any everybody, I don't care who you are, you play basketball and you got an N1, you got so hyped and you screamed and won. The, the, I don't know, they I don't know what kind of hair they got up their asses, but the refs gotta stop because this is ruining now. You talk about starting to ruin games now, especially with that crap they pulled in Philly and the uh, Utah game, these calls. You know, you could clear like a lot of these guys flop and you're still called. They don't even hardly be touched and they're calling fouls. Like, what are you doing? Are you blind? What What's going on? Are you regulated? Are you on a quota of how many fouls you can call per game? What, what are we doing now? But it's 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 pissing me off actually, man. It, it really is it's so yeah. bad. Yeah, it, it, like these guys are like turning into like the Angel Hernandez of basketball. Like they, they you know, it's just. <laughs> You see it all the time with these umpires and, and, and strike zones. It's just absolutely ridiculous. But I, I have a theory that it has to do with the crowd sizes. You know, I, I think the smaller crowd sizes, no, no crowds at all. You know, they hear everything the players are saying. And with no emotion uh, from the fans in the game. Mm-hmm. They just have a have a quick uh, trigger to 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 tee up, so because they know well, the fan it, it won't uh, have any reaction from the fans. What do they care? Mm-hmm. But uh, I think once we get uh, closer to full capacity in these in these arenas, I think the technicals will come down. But it, it's almost embarrassing uh, yeah. to have games decided by technical fouls and. and and with blatant flops, it's it's really sad. It's bad. Yeah, like what do you? Yeah, the flop into like, like come on now. I can understand like that deserves a tech. I'm sorry. <laughs> like you flopping. I mean, like you've seen the air. The guy taking flight. I forgot who it was. Oh, Gary Trent Jr. He's taking flight. Like what? And then he had him looking at him. Like, what the hell are you doing? Like, are we serious? Is this what we're doing now? Just to try to draw a foul? Like like come on. Everybody said, oh, LeBron, everybody does it. Everybody does it for some odd reason. And I don't – it needs to stop, though. But nah, these refs? It, it, it's, it's gamesmanship. So, you know, if you look at soccer and how they flop around and, you know, try to draw penalties and, mm. and, and whatnot, so to, to, to get another personal foul on a player, I can understand the gamesmanship. But, you know, the, the – Obvious blatant ones like you know the yeah. Devox and the and the you know the Superman poses. It's just <laughs> it's a bad look on TV. It's a bad look for the integrity of the game. It's I don't like they tried to like find people for flopping, but it it doesn't seem to to deter it. Mm-hmm. Maybe you're right. Maybe they should just give out tentacles for flopping. Maybe yeah. maybe they'll, maybe they'll stop it. I bet you they'll stop it then. You start getting close to that 16th technical, all this flopping. Oh, wait, I gotta, maybe I got to stop. 
you're gonna get kicked out of a game in. But yeah, there's it's no need for it. I can understand you actually, you can sell it, you know, cross over to Wrestling Life, you know, <laughs> catch the Work Shoot podcast, man, Jason Brooks, Corey Richmond. We see you guys. Um, but yeah, I can understand you selling that, but make sure like a little bit of contact is made. Like obviously you you go into me, you elbow me a little bit. Of course I'm like, oh man, but if I don't get touched before and you're flailing back and beat is notorious for that. You know, but just yeah, just stop it, man. It's it's, it's irritating. And it makes sometimes it makes the games harder to watch, but we'll see if they do anything about it. Yeah. Uh we also had a couple coaches uh fired Past couple oh, of yeah. the Atlanta Hawks fired their coach, Lloyd Pierce, after a disappointing start. Minnesota fired their coach. They still suck. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, hey, uh, man. <laughs> like I said, poor K- and KG didn't even get the team. So, you know, dumps to fire after dumps to fire after dumps to fire. I mean, oh, well. Poor, I feel bad for that fan base. I mean, like I said, Rock with that team hard because of my guy KG, but I uh, nope. Yeah, you, you jump ship at the right time. I shit, man. I I wasn't crazy now. I was like, New York's home. I'm good. Even if I was like, oh, if they have ten game on the five hundred, still a good season. Still would have been better. Look, I was right. But yeah, that that I don't know. Not my problem. <laughs> but yeah, I'm good, I'm good on this side. So I, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Home in New York. They said, whether we sucked or we're good, whatever. Still enjoyable basketball. But, um, yeah, going back to the Hawks, they, they were one of my actual disappointing teams because I thought they were really going to be making that next step up. You know, with Trey Young, John Collins, you know, having Chris Dunn coming in, Gallinari, um, just uh, uh, Bog, uh, Bogdanovic. Um, coming in and possibly taking the scoring load off some guys, and he's been hurt. Gallinari's been hurt, and Chris Dunn has been out for a while now, and mm-hmm. it's just it's not happening. But they still have more than enough talent to win some games with Kevin Herter, Trey, John Collins, you know, Clint Capella. I, I mean, and they're still not winning games. So I, yeah, I think a coaching change. And Nate McMillan's a perfect coach. He had, you know, a lot of per- good years in Portland. A lot of good years in Indiana, so yeah, I think it's a perfect coach for them. He's, he's that could be that grizzled veteran coach that they need to maybe push them into winning some games, especially when they get the other guys back. Yeah, and, and McMillan is looking for a redemption for himself after leading Indiana to so many playoffs uh, appearances, but not really getting that victory that he needed to to solidify his status. So. It's a bit of a redemption song for Atlanta as well as McMillan, much like Doc Rivers is doing in Philly. So um, they're, they're right around what the 10, 11 spot. They're not too far out. Mm-hmm. Uh, Atlanta, it, his offense is definitely capable. It's just a matter of them playing defense. And McMillan will definitely force you to play some defense. Mm-hmm. That's for sure. Uh, Minnesota, they hired a Toronto's uh, assistant coach pretty much like five minutes after they fired their <laughs> head coach. So That's wild. Yeah, and like a lot of the players around the league, it, it puzzled a lot. Hell, it puzzled me too, cause considering who they have as their assistant coaches. Um, do you do you have a beef with like how Minnesota performed their? Uh, yeah. Coaching carousel. Absolutely. I mean, you see Lloyd Pierce, good co- I mean, he's a good, decent coach for these guys. And he gets fired. Who gets the job? The assistant. You don't really out, you don't hire outside of the organization until the end of the season. Like that, that's just telling your assistant coach, oh, you're not worth it. You don't, you don't deserve a shot. Like that, I would take that the wrong way and want to leave. I'm sorry. You putting in that work and, you know, you don't even get a shot. You know, what kind of really, you don't even look at the relationships that they might have with the guys already, you know, the guys on the team. Now you bring in this guy. I don't know who the hell he is. Do you? You know who he is? Uh, not Toronto assistant. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know who the hell he is. But 
it's just, and I've heard nothing but good things about, you know, Minnesota's assistant coach. And for him not to get the job, that makes you, like I said, that organization goes, comes down from Glenn Taylor, Rosas. They, I don't think they know what the hell they're doing. Uh, so, really, so like, do you, do you think that leads to, like, a bigger problem a, a, as far as, because we saw with Nash getting hired in, mm-hmm. in Brooklyn and, and then Stephen A having, I guess, an issue with it, it with, and we see it in football all the time mm-hmm. with the Rooney Rule and how the enemy didn't get a job. I think there's a real, a real issue with minority coaches not getting an opportunity in the NBA. It, it's bothersome. I mean, they, it's a lot of co- Yeah, it's a lot of coaches in the NBA that were, you know, black and they got the opportunities. But it just makes you think. I, I won't throw it out there yet. Cause I'm going to look into it. I'm going to read it and I'm going to read into it before I throw out anything. But it, it is just weird that you have a black assistant coach, you know, all of a sudden, Oh, you get hopped over. But like I've been saying with Gwen Taylor, I think he has a little bit of that bigotry in him because when KG wanted to buy the team, him and flip, they got together. They wanted to buy the team. Glenn Taylor didn't give him a chance. Then he goes, Oh, well, KG. Well, we never talked. Well, cause you probably never want to talk to him. I mean, because KG's more than the most, you know, I won't say big mouth. Yeah, he's, he's a big mouth guy, but he is very vocal and on everything. And for him not to come out and Glenn Taylor, you know, the owner usually, mm-hmm. for him to come out and basically act the way he did with buying the team, it was a pretty much a promise before Flip died, basically. Yeah, we're going to do this deal with the team on that portion of the team. He reneged on it. Lucky you ain't playing spades. Um <laughs> But it's just it's just bad. It's a bad look on that organization because guys see stuff like that and they go, "Hey, why did this guy didn't get that chance?" That that I don't know. If I'm a player, that makes me feel some kind of way. But yeah, in the league, I think if you got an assistant and it's then in the middle of the season, just let the assistant rock see what he can do, and then you know have an official hiring, you know interviews and all that stuff. Have a whole freaking Get all your options together. I can't think of the word right now, but get all your options together with your coach and staff and figure out, hey, maybe this guy can move up to this position and figure it out. But, yeah, they botched that one. I wasn't a fan. I don't think I'm ever going to be a fan of that stuff. Yeah. The assistant's usually the, the the guy right next to him, to the head coach, and he knows the plays, knows how the playbook is run, and it is what it is, I guess. Yeah, it, usually, you know, the interim, uh, usually name interim head coach and, and continue to, with the continuity and, and flow with the team and uh, always as a, as a stepping stone towards uh, possibly something in the future and to be stuck in the same rut considering all the hard work put in, it, it is kind of disheartening. Um, so this, this is All-Star Weekend. Um, Gonna take a look at the rising stars of the of the league. Uh, they were, there's no game, but they are named. <laughs> Wait, really? Yeah, there's no Doug game. Iver, what what was the point of that? I'm thinking it was gonna be a game. Nah, there's no game. Well, either way, the world team would have got washed. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, let me. Yeah, the world team would would got. I, good lord! I saw. I took a like a glance. I said, "Well, oh yeah, it's gonna be a oh lord." <laughs> like what? Michael Mulder. I never heard of him, but um, I think I heard of everybody else. Compazzo, yeah, the dude off. Uh, hey. Yeah, from Denver. Yeah, yeah. He's he's he reminds me of a um, what's his name? They used to play for the Knicks, Prigioni, kind of thing. Yeah, Prigioni slash Marco Yarick, a little bit of deal because. He's awkward, but he gets it done. But yeah, Press is a tool. You know, yeah, he's pretty good. Nikhil, Alexander Walker. I mean, Canada's standing up, man. They're getting these players. Brandon Clark, one of my favorite players. I didn't know Dort was from Canada. It's pretty good to know. Um, you know about RJ. But yeah, they, Canada's bigging up right now. They got their ass whipped, but. But yeah, just, just you look at the U.S. team. Like, what are you going to do with that? Lamelo, Anthony Post, the Edwards, A one from day one. Tyrese Halliburton, 
See, I, I was right about him. He got, uh, damn. Shout out to Obi, but damn. <laughs> Tale, I need a hero. DeAndre Hunter, you know, solid. You can shoot Kelvin Johnson, Kentucky, another Kentucky baller. I mean, those dudes produce those like freaking Mr. Potato Heads. Well, not anymore. But, um, so maybe that was the wrong company to use. But, <laughs> um, but yeah, they produce some like hotcakes. You know, John Morant, you know what he's about. Michael MPJ, Michael Porter Jr., one of the best young players in the league. Zion. Duke all the way, you know what that, you know what that is, James Wiseman. But yeah, that that that's not fair. No, <laughs> they need to start mixing it, the sophomores and the rookies and stuff like that again, because that that looked a lot better. Yeah, uh, yeah, I, I I agree with that. Uh, I forgot when they went to this U.S. World thing, but mm-hmm. now that this is it's it gets worked. But yeah. y- 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 you know who's missing from this? What which team? I guess from the U.S. team. I don't know who you would take. Oh off yeah, from. I know, I know, I know. Emmanuel quickly. Oh, I know. Uh, and I see it because all of man take DeAndre Hunter off that. <laughs> yeah, but I said it. Somebody gotta go. <laughs> <laughs> if I'm gonna pick somebody, it's DeAndre Hunter. I see him right there. <laughs> I see him right there. So yeah, quickly. Yeah, that was kind of kind of weird to see him off, but. But they're not even playing a game anyway, so now I don't really won't care because I honestly thought that they were playing a game. So it really doesn't matter now. But quickly, he'll prove them wrong. I think, you know, where he was picked, that's all he needs. That's all the motivation he needs right there. And he keep keep on balling quick because we found one. Damn sure it did. And I'll take it. Going to take a look at the uh, uh, skills oh. competition. Got uh, Covington, Doncic, Chris Paul, Julius Randle, Sabonis, and Vooch uh, from the Magic. I see how this goes. Three white guys versus three black guys, huh? <laughs> Look at this nonsense. How dare the NBA? What, what, what are we talking about solidarity? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> no, but yeah, this, this is pretty interesting, though. I'm not even going to lie. This, a, they're all guys like that can really do everything on the floor. Rocco, he can shoot the three, space the floor. I don't know about playmaking skills, but I I guess they need somebody to throw in there. Everybody else I can understand. He's kind of – Rocco was the wild card in that one. But, yeah, I like this. I, I like this lineup. Who, who you got taking it? Julius Randle. I am pi- – I'm picking the Knicks again. <laughs> I am do- – sorry, CP. CP is my guy, but I'm going to go on a limb and say Julius Randle takes it. I mean, every time the Knicks are in a skills competition, they run the show. So. That's what I'm saying. Like, KP did it. I mean, hey, I'm going to go with Julius Randle. We're going to strike while the iron is warming up. <laughs> man, I, I can't I can't go against the point guard, man. Yeah. Well, I, I, can't, I, can't, I can't do it. That's fine. I, I mean, like, I think – well, it's – it's going to be a surprise, I think. I just have that gut feeling it's going to be a surprise. Like, some bonus is going to come out of nowhere and be like, and my, you know who my daddy was? See, that's the thing, too. <laughs> uh, Venus was no joke on the court, man. That dude could pass like a mofo. He could shoot. He did, he did everything. So you can't run away from the DNA when it comes to this kind of stuff. And Sabonis, he could be a favorite, too. But I'm going to pick Julius, though. Akil has uh, Sabonis in the comment section. So he mm-hmm. he agrees with the DNA. Uh, I mean, you know, Luca's going to be the, the, the odds-on favorite. Oh, yeah. I mean. If he doesn't win, I, I'd be surprised, but I, I can't go against a grizzled vet, uh, Chris Paul. Um, Absolutely. Skills competition That's is like my second favorite um, mm-hmm. uh, event, like All-Star Weekend. Mm-hmm. I, um, I agree, man. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad they added the, they added this one. Yeah, me too. Oh, you, got, you, ever, no, you ever got to ask who I'm picking. Come on. Oh, oh we, yeah, we got the three-point shootout here. We got uh, Booker, Jalen Brown. Uh, Chef Curry came back. Uh, good for him. I mean, he doesn't really need to prove anything, but, you know. <laughs> I know, right? Uh, I, I won't go against the star power uh, for Saturday night. I mean, sorry, sorry, Sunday night. I'm so used to saying Saturday night. Saturday night, right? <laughs> Zach Levine, Donovan Mitchell, Jason Tatum. All good uh, uh, three-point shooters. Good competition. All right, we know who you got. But let's hear it. Oh, absolutely. You know, come on, man. 
my guy, DB from Kentucky, D Book. Coming to get that crown, boy. Like that. He's uh, he's the person that's made for that. Like Curry's too, but like D Book is made for this guy. His form, everything. He's just flawless, and, man. And he had it in the bag until uh, uh Buddy Heel just decided to heat up and that that mm-hmm. was all she wrote. Um for, for real. You had Booker last year. Um I, I'm 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 gonna go Zach Levine here. Ooh, that's t- that's a tough pick right there. That's a tough pick. You know he he has eight three pointers in the game. He has ten point three pointers in the game. He's mm-hmm. he's a streaky shooter. Um, and we know Lillard was in this, and Curry took his place. If mm-hmm. Lillard was in it. I would have I would have taken him. Mm-hmm. But uh, I, I like Zach Levine here. It, it's just I I think the star is gonna grow brighter. Maybe this is a competition he can't get cheated out of. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. He, he was on the winning side of those. Damn right. Nah, but yeah, that would be cool. Watch Chef come out and freaking knock out everything. <laughs> just, okay. just to prove a point. <laughs> if he comes out and get a perfect score, I mean... <laughs> <laughs> so he hit the last shot, run off into the locker room. I mean, that would just solidify what's already a legendary status. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this, this is going to be good. Like, three-point shootout is my favorite contest of the by weekend. F- by Easily. far. Easily. Just It's just exciting just seeing them getting out. And when they get going, it just makes you want to just go out there and just, oh, shit, I want to do that. I want to shoot. I want to shoot. But, yeah, I was a more free-throw line guy. I could hit jumpers all day. That three-point, yeah, it wasn't my game. <laughs> at all yeah, same here I, I i tried it it just doesn't work yet Mm-mm. but you know i i, I admire this man uh, for real I'm, I'm looking forward to this three-point shootout definitely 6 30 i think it's before the game mm-hmm. uh so i think that usually takes about a half hour so yeah it's good, good stuff and obi yeah <laughs> Knicks also run dunk contests as well, so there's, exactly. <laughs> there's that. We can win. At least we won something. Got uh, Obi, Anthony Simons, and Cassius Stanley. Duke. Uh, this year's dunk competition. Um, these things get lackluster every every day. every year. I'm I'm go- it's going halftime. I'm gonna consider this bathroom break. <laughs> Oh man, yeah, I, three people, man. This shit's like a yeah. like you couldn't we couldn't get like a maybe a a commercial a long commercial or a movie freaking <laughs> a freaking trailer or something. I mean, three people like what what the hell is the excitement in that? But maybe they come out with some heat. I, I think Obi's gonna take it. You know, his dad, know about his dad, father's the del- I mean, Duncan's delight. You know, legend down here in New York. We know what he's about. And I think Obi's built for this kind of test, so because he he's a big guy, but he got that Amari power when he gets to that he gets to the rack and decides to throw it down. And I didn't know I knew Cash Stanley was a dunker from Duke, but I didn't really see him do that much. So, and Anthony Simons, all I see him do is shoot. So, <laughs> so I don't I don't know. Yeah. So so the judges are uh, Spud Webb, Josh Smith. Uh, Dominique oh, wow. and uh, Jay Rich. Oh, okay. Oh, see, Lee, that's what I'm talking about. See, guys that you know that can throw it down. That, yeah. that was just, yeah, I like yeah. that. Winners. Yeah, because Wade fucked it up for everybody. Yeah, so. he did. Yeah, keep his ass away from it. But, you know, uh, I guess with three people for halftime, I guess that's for the time constraints. So it, I guess it yeah. makes sense. Uh, we've seen the mm-hmm. dunk videos of OB and Dennis Smith Jr. Maybe, maybe he has something cooking in the lab, but mm. uh, I don't know if the, you have to find incentive to find, to get like the John Morants and the Zions and the LeBrons to find enter these competitions. Cause mm-hmm. yeah, I, I mean, think we, we passed Braun. Uh, yeah. I, I think he'll, I think he'll do it in his last year. Hmm. Interesting. You know, uh, kind of like a going away present type deal. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That would be interesting. Because 
I mean, I, I, I can appreciate the like the rising stars concept of the mm-hmm. dunk contest, but it, it needs star power. Yeah. It, Absolutely. It, it needs star power. Um, but you know, we'll, I don't want to, you know, like trash these guys before they start. So mm-hmm. it, if the first two dunks are, are decent, I won't use the bathroom. I'll hold it. <laughs> if not, <laughs> you know, um, I'm, I'm going to take an extended, <laughs> extended dookie break. <laughs> <laughs> Legs going numb and all. No, man. <laughs> extended dookie break. <laughs> Legs going numb. Come on, Obi. Bring it home. We want some playoffs. We want we want dunk contests. We we want dunk contest freaking chip again. That's the one thing Nate Robinson didn't lay out in or get laid out in. Sorry, sorry, Nate. You will forever be known as getting knocked the fuck out. Gun smoke. <laughs> <laughs> but this, I see. I like this kind of thing. It's like it me like a park, you know, when you. Oh yeah, I'm picking this guy, and LeBron made it fun though. You know, LeBron he was kind of energetic about it because you know he wasn't the biggest fan of it. Right. KD he didn't give a damn. <laughs> KD <laughs> KD cracks me up. Just his whole demeanor. He's just like, yeah, I guess I'll pick Bradley Beal. Yeah, if I need a bucket, Bradley Beal. He's all cool about it. But yeah, LeBron seen is pretty strong though. You got it. Yeah, I also liked how they did the draft. Figures LeBron would take, you know, Giannis. I mean, who wouldn't? He, mm-hmm. I guess, you know, he doesn't really want to challenge. So uh, mm-hmm. that, there's that. But um, Durant's first pick was Kyrie, which. You know, that wasn't surprising. Yeah, it, it goes to show you. I, I wanted to see if LeBron would take him mm-hmm. if he was on the board. But we, I guess we'll never see that opportunity. Mm-hmm. Uh Brown and Curry. I think Durant also had a chance to take Curry. Matter of fact, he took Kyrie before he yes. took Curry. Yeah, there you go. So, I mean, and Durant's not playing in the game, which, you know, it, it, I guess it speaks more volumes. Mm-hmm. Or you just, it's an all-star exhibition. It is what it is. Mm-hmm. You know, nobody wanted Paul George. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh I mean, uh, LeBron took the point guard. Uh, I'm not surprised there. The banana boat crew. Mm-hmm. Um, getting word from Akil that Booker is out because of his knee, so we're going to have to find a replacement there. That's, that's going to that's gonna, that's gonna be... Oh, start. so he's out for the three-point contest too, or...? I, I think so. he might be. I guess I guess it'd be Chef Curry for me then, huh? I got to change my pick. <laughs> Damn. I guess it's Chef Curry. God darn it. Good luck in the kill. Uh, so yeah, and then and then when it went to the first pick of the reserves, the Rams went straight to James Harden. Mm-hmm. So, you know, so scary hours, even in the All Star game. <laughs> and then went all then went all New York uh, with Julius yeah. Randall and Damn right. hometown guy of uh, Donovan Mitchell, even though he was picked last. So, Damn. Uh, I, I'm excited. For, uh, I'm excited for the All-Star game because there's nothing else on TV. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Um, I'm a little bit more optimistic than I was the first time talking about it. I mean, it's nice. You know, because that means, you know, guys like Randall and Vooch and Zion is going to get shot. They're going to get a lot of time probably because the other guys, you know. But I'll let the young guys play. Let them, let them show out. And that's what I want to see. Oh, nice. Uh, getting word from Akil that Conley will replace Booker. Oh, okay. I mean, he's a he's a good shooter from three. Okay. So finally, Conley will get some love. Um, that I'm I'm excited to hear that. He's first time All Star. Uh, there we go. Long long overdue. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, avoiding a, a, a first place Jazz team. Conley's been one of the main leaders in the show. So uh, I'm glad to hear that. For real. But that, yeah, that's definitely cool. I like, I definitely like Conley, man. He's, he's one of the nicest guys. Just, it's hard not to like him and everything good that comes his way. He definitely deserves. Yeah, man. A- absolutely. Uh, uh, Damian Lillard <clears throat> over on team LeBron. LeBron, you know, has 
host of hires with Godfrey and Willard. So mm-hmm. um, I'm excited to see that. You know, it's a bonus. And Ben Simmons, I'm still trying to figure out how he got in. But, <laughs> yeah. He said yeah. He, he needed guys to play defense. Somebody that's going to dig in. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess. I, I, I bet he'll take a bunch of fucking three-pointers here now. He better not. I don't I mean, give a damn to back. No, I don't care if it's exhibition. Don't take no threes either. If you don't shoot him in the All Star game, when are you gonna shoot him? Never, because this shit is terrible. His shot is terrible. I mean, Dwight Howard hit a three the other night. Dwight Howard had a better form than he does. They're practicing together. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's the same thing Doc Rivers said, too. <laughs> Good Lord. Yeah, him and Ben Simmons and three pointers just don't. Nah. When everybody go crazy that you hit a three, I mean, legitimately crazy, jumping off the bench, and yeah. Speaking of sideline hero, let's talk about Theo Pimpson. Thank you, Leon. That that dude, he's a good bench warmer. He got everybody hyped up. I see why the BK Nets, you know, they liked him on the team. He's a, and this is the first time that they got a um. It was a non-white. I mean a non-white player to be, like, the, the favorite on the bench. I mean, no, I'm dead serious. We we had Rob, people cheering for Ron Baker. You know, Steve Novak was – but he, he was – Steve Novak actually did stuff. But it's it's not like Jared – not Jared, though, like Chris Deli or somebody. But, yeah, he got in the game. Yeah, Jimmer for that. Yeah, bring in Jimmer. We got Theo Pinson. That shit is hilarious. Well, good <laughs> Lord. We got Theo. They were cheering for Theo to come in the game. Equal opportunity, bummer. <laughs> exactly. AKA Herbert Williams. Ah, boy. <laughs> Up dirty, down dirty. <laughs> Your time to shine, Theo. Your time to shine. <laughs> he still ain't getting the damn game. <laughs> Tips is like, hell no, you ain't getting the damn. When you when you talk about playing roles, he's like everybody playing the role. We got Austin Rivers. I'm like, where? He said Austin Rivers, yeah, Theo. I said, what the fuck? What the fuck they doing? Giving you extra water? What the hell? Why are you giving him a shout out? Excuse me? Come on, Tibbs. <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about? Well, you can't be fooling us, man. <laughs> we watched the whole game. We didn't see them anywhere. You know, this, is, this is not Minnesota. We we know our basketball here. Oh, shit. Man, that's the gun smoker. To, that's the shit that you in the show on. <laughs> Shut the lights off. Put the kids to bed. But yeah, I shit back to them, man. I hell. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Oh man, it, uh, real quick, I'm gonna go over these all star rules because they. It's, oh yeah. It, it, it can be a bit uh, confusing. So, good thing money's going to charity. Uh, HBCUs. That's always that's always dope. If anybody's seen the court. Uh, maybe I'll, I'll post it in the group. It, it's, a, it's a dope looking court. Uh, Atlanta made for it. It's HBCU themed. Uh, so, first three quarters are cumulative score. Mm-hmm. Each quarter is separate. Uh, the, the, the cumulative score of the first three quarters is, is the score that goes into the fourth quarter, which is untimed, and you add 24 points to the, to, to the top score. Mm-hmm. If you follow, if you follow along with the game, it, it it'll it'll make sense. It, mm-hmm. It's a, it's just a, another way to get to the goal to make it competitive. Um, mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure they'll probably explain it better than I can uh, during the game because it, it added some competitiveness last year. It added some flair, and uh, it, it was one of the most well played games uh, in the past, like ten. 15 years. It was, oh, yeah, for real. I think Kawhi, Kawhi won the MVP, right? MVP, yep. Ended at the line with Anthony Davis. So, And Corey Richmond of the Work Shoot Podcast wanted to know 308, point, 308 and a half points combined between the teams. Under or over? I mean... Well over. Well over? Yeah, because they, you know, no defense is played. So, no, I, I think it's just that the amount of threes these guys are going to put up is just going to oh. be like outstanding. Oh, so, yeah, it's going to be crazy. You know, Lillard, the, the, well, I mean, now no Booker, but, you know, the Lillard, the Currys, the Mitchells, uh, 
and Bede and Joker, they're going to put up some three. So it's just going to be a three-point barrage. I, I, I think they're going to hit him at a high clip. So I, I, I it, you know, betting man, I take the over on the 308. Okay. That's fair. But definitely fair. All right. Uh, I'm going to close the show out. We're going to give out some mid-season awards real, real fast. Uh, um, I know in the preseason we, we kind of predicted them. Uh, see how far along we came so far uh, in the mid-season. Who you got for the MVP? Nikola Jokic. He's averaging who'd you, 20. Who you pick mm-hmm. in the preseason? What the hell did I pick in the preseason? I don't, it might have been did I pick Luca? I think so. I might have picked Luca. Hell no. <laughs> um, yeah, Jokic, because he's averaging almost averaging a triple double, especially for a big guy. You got to start giving these big guys some love because he's putting in the work, man. I mean, it's hard to deny that. I will be shocked if it's either not him or Embiid, but I'm definitely going with Jokic on this one. Just watching him all. I've watched a lot of Denver this year. Yeah, he. He is the he is the difference in that team. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, preseason, I, I picked Lillard uh, for the MVP. I, I had Embiid as an outside shot. Mm-hmm. So for call. so for right now, I, I got I have Embiid as my MVP. All right. We're going sticking with the big men. I'm sticking with men. the big men. They're back. See, see, big men are back. Best since the '90s, man. That's it's great. Rookie of the year. Uh, I think we're um, unanimous on this one. Lamelo. <laughs> yeah. without, without question. Without question. There's no, you know, Anthony Edwards had a shot. You know, if he got a lot, you know, more playing time, but Lamelo is just doing his thing. He, he's exceeded expectations. Shooting is not as bad as we thought it was going to be. We knew his court vision and passing. Like some of the, he makes Magic Johnson passes. I, if you get upset about that, you need to watch the tape because the <laughs> stuff he does on the floor, especially with the little. He threw it down to um. Yeah, the little, the little he put some he, he yeah he put some spin, spin on, on that. That was crazy, but yeah, Lamelo Ball definitely rookie of the year. Uh, we might have different most valuable play. I mean, most improved player, but go ahead. The team is probably Duke. The team, the team is Dukies, but you know who I'm talking about. I'm talking about Jeremy Grant. He went from averaging 12 points that game to 25, five and three. It would have been Christian Wood if you know. He didn't have that injury. That that was big, but I got to give it to Jeremy Grant because he's been consistent, been on the floor, still putting in work for that bum team, and I really hope he gets out of there. <laughs> I mean, no, I, I can't argue that pick. Uh, preseason, I, I had Chris Boucher from the Raptors uh, right now. Good, yeah. Um, but my most improved is Christian Wood, actually, mm-hmm. even with the time off because Houston looks god-awful right now. They lost, <laughs> what, 13 straight? Oh God! Um, John ass, like, yeah, his ass <laughs> out in Houston. <laughs> we ain't talking <laughs> about this. <trip. laughs> Woo! That's great. <laughs> John was like, "What the fuck? What the hell did they trade me into?" <laughs> oh poor guy. Oh man, six man. Usually I'll be like six man, like Lou will, but I gotta give it to. My man Jordan Clarkson, he's averaging just career highs everywhere. Especially for the best team in the league, you got to give it up for Jordan Clarkson. Dude's playing starters minutes, dropping 18 a game. Walking bucket, as my guy Leon always says, um, from the line and from the field. And then got to give it to Jordan Clarkson. Yeah, uh, I I had Kuzma in the preseason. Mm-hmm. Right now, I have Clarkson, but I, I think – a strong second half from either quickly or uh, Melo has been coming on real strong lately. I think mm-hmm. he, if he continues his trend, mm-hmm. he can make that race closer, possibly pass him at Portland and make the playoffs. Mm-hmm. But yeah, right now I, I have Jordan Clarkson. That would be cool to see Melo, especially quickly. That would be awesome. I don't know if they give love to rookies like that. But um, yeah, that's it's pretty solid for midseason. We just know it ain't Luca. Yeah, it is not Luca. It ain't Luca. Oh, oh, who's your uh, coach of the year? Ooh, coach 
coach of the year. Screw this. Tom Thibodeau. I'm just saying. I am just – we're going to close out the show. T.T. Tom Thibodeau bringing the Knicks back to relevance. Listen, I don't care if you guys – I ain't talking about best records. Quinn Snyder, yeah, you doing your thing. Hell no. We are giving it to Tom Thibodeau motherfucking dope. Right? That's what we want. Listen, you, you bring the Knicks back to relevance, you got to get something because – this is unprecedented, except for me, because I said it. So, good job. I'm gonna get myself a. This is the crossover. If you remember back, the job of Barry Horowitz. So, myself on the back. <laughs> damn right. We're getting to the playoffs. Damn it. Well, I, I, I'm, I'm gonna go across the bridge. I'm gonna go Steve Nash, and that, we're gonna we're gonna fight about it. So we gonna fight. It, it is it is what it is. They got three stars. Because uh, I, you know, we only played like seven games. We only played seven true. games together. So what? We got you, Randall. Mm. Randall or Scary Hours? We're, we're gonna see. Uh, the second I mean, half's I mean, gonna be good. True. That Scary Hours. I mean, if that's any indication, y'all, it's, it's an EP. It's kind of short. So we hoping y'all don't end up short, coming up short in the playoffs. Just saying. Well, that, that that track with Rick Ross though, is, is yeah, it's nice. Yeah, it's, it's good. It's good. Oh, definitely. But yeah, maybe he named it Scary Hours because of, see, I like that Scary Hours three tracks. KD, Kyrie, James Harden, it kind of coincides with each other. I like it. Yeah, shout it, out to Drake. Yeah, shout out to Drake. Yeah, you know, with uh, I, I know to having a versus maybe hopefully we talking about maybe LL and. That's a whole other story. Yeah, we'll, into that like pop culture, but yeah, I was yeah. about to say we'll, we'll catch you over there with that one. Yeah, it, it, that's gonna be good, man. But it's it, it's been good here. Uh, you know, it's been a long long layoff from the past uh, like week and a half. Mm-hmm. We're gonna come at you next Wednesday, considering we're at All Star break. What the hell are we gonna talk about on Wednesday? So exactly. uh, we'll come <laughs> back at you in the following Wednesday, the seventeenth, I think. Yeah. Yeah. I think, uh. Yep. Seventeenth. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I was right. Seventeenth. But mm-hmm. uh, you, you can catch our other shows, the uh, Total Basis Podcast with Felipe Malicio and Sean Flannery. This past weekend, uh, they had our good friend Melvin, uh, uh Melvin on from uh, baseball all year round, from all around. Uh, they went over the Dominican players, uh, their top twenty-five. Uh, mm-hmm. From each position, it was a really good, good listen. Yes, sir. Uh, good stuff over there. Spring training coming up. Get your fantasy lineups ready. Get your rankings ready to go. Um, both guys are knowledgeable. Uh, catch total basis Sunday mornings, 11 a.m. Uh, over in Baseball Life or over on the YouTube or Anchor Spotify by subscribing to the Life Group Podcast. Monday nights, Donk City. 7 p.m., Vince Mercandetti, Henry Maldonado Jr., previewing uh, spring training, getting ready for baseball season, and Ooh. covering the March Madness brackets of baseball movies. How they disrespected Harbaugh this past Monday. <laughs> uh, I will never forgive them, but, you yeah, know, it is what it is. Keanu Reeves did suck. <laughs> Tuesday, oh, Tuesday night, uh, the audible, Matt Bushnell, Randy Hammond, uh, Matt's really excited about the uh, the uh, uh, idea of Russell Wilson coming to Chicago, yeah. finally getting a real quarterback. Uh, I hope not. Maybe Watts will be traded before then. I don't think so. But uh, free agency coming up. Those guys will be all on it Tuesday night, 7 p.m. Football life, be audible. And uh, Thursday, the Work Shoot Wrestling Podcast with Corey Richmond, Jason Brooks, A.E. Dub, Shaq going through tables, right. Cody, uh, Cody Rhodes. Well, I mean, listen, that was some of the best work Shaq did <laughs> <done> about <laughs> no, <I know. laughs> no, 15 it was, years. It was so. pretty cool. It was pretty cool. I, I, I thought it was decent. Let's catch out the, the NXT going to Tuesday nights. You know, I like it because I, I, now I want to see both. I want to see both. And I was, I'm more of an NXT guy, so and I'll flip over, and I ain't like that. I want to have Tuesdays for this, Wednesdays for that. But it's baseball season coming up, so I might have to catch it on the flip side. And it's basketball still going on, so I don't know. If I catch it, I'll catch it. But that's an interesting take. My bad. Take it away, Mr. LT. And I ain't talking oh, no, about Mr. Taylor. 
uh, uh, Bobby Lashley with the, with the crown. So, uh, you know, good for him. Um, hopefully he just doesn't talk <laughs> around, smash people with the belt. You got the title. Uh, long time coming. Mm-hmm. So, uh, they'll have, those guys are all on it on Thursday nights. And uh, we'll be back to you on the 17th. Uh, but you can catch us on the Life Group Podcast Network over on YouTube or on Spotify, uh, Anchor, Apple. Oh, we're also now on iHeartRadio if you have that. Shout out to Corey Richmond. Yes, shout out to Corey Richmond. Uh, we're on iHeartRadio. So uh, expanding our audience, broadening our, our horizons, and, uh, you know, some somebody's listening. But uh, <laughs> but thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, thank you for your support. And uh, I'm about to catch Coming to America 2. You'll be good and ready. It's on today? Yeah, it's on Amazon Prime. What's wrong with oh, you, man? Man, I forgot. Oh, yeah, that's the fifth. Huh? I guess I'll be watching it. I'm yeah. not usually, uh, you know, remakes of movies, but, and all that kind of stuff, but I, I got to be into this way. Eddie Murphy's my guy, so my favorite comedian of all time, so I got to gotta give him some love. In the face, man. In the face. In the face. Get your soul glow out. Facts. So, um, until next Wednesday, bow out, everybody. Yes, sir.